Okay. Hi, everybody. So, those of you who are, don't know, my name is Justin Bailey. Um, today, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about chainsaw carving. I personally am a chainsaw carver. My wife also is a chainsaw carver. Um, I've only been carving for a few years. However, my wife has been carving for about eight. And uh, I'm going to go into a little bit about the brief history of carving as an art form. Then I'm going to go into a little bit about my story and my work. Pass this around so everybody can see. Keep the raccoon. And then see if I can figure out how to work this thing. Oh, as far as the history of chainsaw carving. This guy here, this weird looking hobo here, his name's Ray Murphy. He's the founder as the father of chainsaw carving. It all started back in the 1950s. He had really humble beginnings. He started by carving his brother's name into a log. That's where he got to start, and it just took off from there. Now he's carving wildlife and things like that. He set the stage for the wildlife carvings. You see a lot of bears. Uh, a lot of bears well, came from him. And he's definitely the father of the fall guard that is chainsaw. Um, pay attention as I go through this to the, the quality of the carvings and how they progress over time. Um, the Trail of Tall Tales. This is in Northern California, the climate. Um, it was commissioned by the Trail of the Trees of Mystery. Um, and it's 50 pieces put together out of, they're all carved out of redwood. Some are stumps, as you can see in this top picture here, some are slabs. And then there are relief carved with two different slabs. Uh, they were, it was done by a guy named Ken Kaiser. This is a, an, evol like an evolution of the art form. It, it moved into more of a recognized thing. He took it to a new level. Instead of just doing the one piece, he did an entire story. All the, the entire story is 50 pieces based on Paul Bunyan and his stories. Really interesting thing, if you're having a climate, it's a great place to go. A lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> again, carbon, redwood, and very interesting characters. See, definitely not the traditional uh, bears or eagles. A lot more. Roadside chainsaw carvers here. How many of you have ever been driving down the road and see some some guy off the side of the road with a chainsaw carving? It's these guys are a special breed. <laughs> they're they're really cool. Uh, they're a lot a lot of fun to get to know. Very bohemian. Um, they they have their own lifestyle. They showers are definitely optional. <laughs> they they go from competition to competition, and they're constantly carving on the road. All their carvings are for sale in the back of their truck, that kind of thing. And that's how they make their living. Uh, they really are. They again live in the competition circuit. They live on the road. Cool guys. This guy here is named Steve Backus. He's a friend of mine. He's the epitome in my life of the roadside chainsaw carver. He's the funniest guy you'll ever meet. He's massive. Uh, he's actually as tall as I am, and definitely bigger around. And he's a big teddy bear. Um, really funny guy. Has quite the personality. The this definitely evolved from the concept that. Ray initiated. And so these guys, they all learned from that and they started picking it up. A lot of these guys are loggers, um, you know, things like that. They're not artists. They're just guys that happen to have a chainsaw and they were like, man, I'm not making any money. I gotta make some money. So they started making money and this is the only way they knew how and it's, they're doing pretty good at it. Um, and Steve actually has settled down a bit and now he's getting up there in age. And he settled over the new Oregon Coast. Great guy. Quite the entertainment. This is what the sport, what the art forms become today. It's not what it used to be. There's a lot of artists moving into it. Whereas before it was all loggers that picked up chainsaws. 
things like that. It was a full card really. Um, this, the one on the left there, is was done at the Husky Cup in Germany, the World Cup for chainsaw carvers. There's hundreds of competitions around the world today. Um, it's definitely it's grown quite a bit from its humble origins. The that one on the, on the left was done by Jeff Sandowski, and again a friend of mine. I've competed with him in competitions on the Oregon coast. Amazing artist. Uh, he actually his, his beginnings were in mountaineering. Kind of crazy. He was a mountain guy that um, in Canada for a long time. Moved down to the states and started carving. So and then the guy, the dinosaur, the T Rex there, is all chainsaw. First off. Entirely chainsaw. There's no sanding done, no nothing, uh, no finish. And that was done by a guy named Scott Dow. Again, an artist that he built sets for a living out of foam for a long time. And instead, and couldn't make any money at it, and was using the same tools, so he picked up wood as a medium so he could make some money because the people were, weren't buying the sets. The, this is the first book written about chainsaw carving, the art of chainsaw carving, and it's evolved from there. Again, quite the evolution of abilities. As far as the artists picking up the chainsaws and things like that, the means for them to move into the sport has been competitions. Um, we go to these competitions all the time. There's, it's, there's hundreds of them, and people work circuits, right? So we, this is Steve Backus, and it kind of says it all. Competitions are exhausting. You're given, say, 24 hours to carve the biggest, most impressive piece you can carve, and with the most negative space, the most difficult thing you can carve, and they are exhausting. Um, these guys are athletes. Steve doesn't look like much of an athlete, but the man's unbelievably strong. Um, he, these three pieces here that you see were all three carved within 24 hours. So just to give you an idea of how racking they can be on your body. Um, we use specialized tools you can kind of see. I have a chainsaw here. I'm gonna, I don't want to pass it around. It's, even it's dull right now, but even as it's dull, um, it's sharper than most chainsaws you'll find. Um, I have to keep it that way in order to do the work that I do. So you're welcome afterwards to come up and take a look at it. It's definitely not the traditional chainsaw. Um, the bar is specialized. The, the other than that, it's the chain is actually smaller than most chains, designed to be able to turn in the wood. Most chainsaws, you want them to just go straight. We don't. We want them to be able to turn. We want them to be able to do what we want them to do. That's kind of the competition circuit. There's more artists again picking up chainsaws due to this. <clears throat> my story. This is some of my work. The bottom here is my first bear ever, um, and it was done in the garage with my wife. She kind of walked me through it. She got me into chainsaw carving, and her mother was one of the pioneers of the sport, back when it was a sport. Um, and she's, they're both amazing artists, I'll get into them later, but this is just a couple uh, pictures that I have my uh, picture of my work. Um, there's that. Uh, my thing is definitely more of smaller pieces. Um, it's my niche in the market. I, I can I have more control over the chainsaw than most carvers, so I'm able to do this eagle here. Um, you can't really see it in this picture, but his mouth is open and his tongue is touching the top of his mouth, and that's all chainsaw. Um, so again, that's my niche, that's my story. That's my um, the people who taught me. Uh, I was, the reason I got into this is because I was inspired by the people around me. I had amazing artists around. Me. This guy's name is Conrad Sandoval. This is the Last Supper, as you can see, um, all Christian influence. This down here is Jesus with the full, like, larger than life, um, Jesus with the children, and just a really cool father figure kind of picture. And just 
this is actually a pick on it because it's all the self portrait, but he does this was a <laughs> forty five minute quick card. He carved that face in forty five minutes at a competition one time. Um, actually not that long ago. Great artist, um, quite the inspiration for what I do and why I do it. And this is my wife, Heather Bailey. She got me into it. She's the one that held my hand kind of through it and taught me most of what I know. She's quite the amazing artist. This piece here is in uh, Big Bear, California. These, they're collectors of hers. They have and probably close to 100 pieces now. Oh, gosh. Between the two of us. And the top is just an eagle picture that I have from the other eagle shoot. So that's today. Just to recap, I've kind of talked to you to touch a little bit about the history of Chainsaw Garden, where it comes from, my own influences, and my own influence on that. It's something that's dear to my heart. Hopefully, I would like to do a little on the what. what happening in the sport, what's happening in the art form, what's happening out there. So next time you see a chainsaw carver, it'll be a bit of a different experience. Thank you, and uh, that's it.